Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Sports Out. From the always classy city of San Diego, it is time for Braves baseball. All roads lead to Petco Park for the middle game of three. The Braves try to get even in the series. Atlanta seeks win number 54. Offensive help just a day away. Freddie Freeman is in town. All smiles for him. He's completed his minor league rehab stint. He'll be eligible to be activated and in the lineup in game three here tomorrow afternoon. Hi again, friends. Joe and Chip, welcome to the ballpark. Busy day for the Padres. They made a trade with the Texas Rangers, who are still in a playoff hunt in the American League. Braves killer Will Venable, not here. He's now a Ranger, minor league catcher, and a player to be named later on the way to the San Diego Ball Club. That's good news for tonight's Braves starter, young Matt Whistler. Yeah, Venable's been a Braves killer, but not in the lineup, not on the team, so Matt Whistler ought to feel pretty good about that. For Matt Whistler, his recent starts, he's struggled a little bit to try to get back in the win column. He does have five wins in his first ten starts as a big leaguer, and that's very good. Tonight he'll be certainly motivated to pitch against his old ball club, but one of the things he's got to do, limit the base runners. His last time out against Tampa Bay, close to 100 pitches in only five innings. Gave up seven hits and two walks. One of the things he's got to do tonight, limit the base runners. One of the big acquisitions for the San Diego Padres was big game James Shields. A big contract, but Joe, quite frankly, this year's been a big struggle for him at times. He, he got off to a great start, Chip, but lately it's been a struggle. In fact, over his last 13 starts, the Padres have only won two of those 13 starts. So it's been a fight for him. He's still got good stuff. He's still in the top 10 in the league in strikeouts, and it'll be a challenge for the Braves hitters no matter how he's going right now. And this is what big game James Shields did last time out against the Cincinnati Reds. The Braves saw James Shields in Atlanta and hit him pretty hard if memory serves. They did. They had a good outing against him. They beat him in Atlanta, so hopefully, in fact, he's never beaten the Atlanta Braves. Hopefully that continues again tonight. Sounds like a plan. Game two here in San Diego. California. Nice crowd filing in here in Petco Park. Braves had a great game defensively last night. We'll break that down for you as we get you set for the ball game right after this.
is presented by your Atlanta area Mazda dealers. Driving matters. Welcome back to San Diego where the Braves are hoping to draw even in this three-game set with the Padres and put the brakes on this eight-game losing streak they're on here at Petco Park. Hello again, everyone. I'm Andre Aldridge, and despite last night's loss, well, the Braves continue to play outstanding defense, and I tell you what, they turned four double plays on the night. Adonis Garcia got that party started on a jet jerk liner in the third, doubling off Dustin Upton. Jace Peterson flashing the leather. How about Simba being Simba? That's why he has a platinum glove. But, of course, Michael Bourne really made the play of the night and left. Rob and Derek Norris and starting a 7-6-3 double play in the sixth. And while that was stellar, Bourne told me that everything really starts with Simba, and that's his mind power as well as his execution. But still, as we go back to the sixth inning and think about everything that took place in that Michael Bourne play, the Braves' dugout is on fire to my left, folks. Uh, we asked Bourne what he was thinking about when the ball was coming out to him. Nothing's going through my mind. <laughs> I'm trying to go get the ball. <laughs> I'm trying to be an athlete, and uh, I go, I see the ball, and I go get it. I just try to get used to the how how the ball is spinning, mm -hmm. you know. And I I ran to a spot to where I thought it would be at, and uh, you know, I knew it was hit good. He he squared it up, and I I just ran to it, and I knew that it was close to the meeting cam, so I was going all out, you know, and uh. I tell you what did confuse me is how close I was to the wall. I didn't know what a wall was because I'm I'm not used to it all the way. So I look, and I look, and I look back up. I see the ball is kind of coming over my head, and I say, yeah, I just better try to make a catch right here, <laughs> and I did. You know. Michael Bourne, definitely the man out there in left field taking care of business. And it's not just raining sunflower seeds, it's raining bubblegum, folks. But we're getting ready for Braves baseball, and it should be good to the very last drop. Matt Whistler looking to take care of his business against his old team and against his buddy, Mr. Shields. Chip and Joe have the call. Quick timeout, coming back with more right after the break. Presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. That's the beautiful Del Coronado Hotel in San Diego, California. Another Chamber of Commerce day. Perfect night for a ball game here at Petco. It's game two of our three game series. Let's check out the Braves starting lineup presented by Academy Sports. It'll be Michael Bourne, Cameron Maven, and Nick Marcakis. One, two, and three. A.J. Brzezinski's back in the lineup cleaning up. Adonis Garcia at third. Jace Peterson at second. Joey Terdoslovich gets a start at first base. Freddie Freeman expected to be activated here tomorrow. Simmons and Whistler eighth and ninth, and their hands will be full with an Ironman. James Shields, a right-handed starter. Indeed. Since 2011, this 33-year-old right-hander. First in start, second in complete games. First in innings pitched. 
That's because over the last four years he's pitched at least 227 innings each season. 66 wins over those over that period of time. 11th in the major leagues. This year he's 8 and 5 with a 3.89 ERA, 122 career wins. Low 90s fastball, excellent changeup, slider, and a curve. The San Diego defensive lineup looks a little different with Will Venable now a Texas Ranger. That means it's Upton, Upton, and Kemp left to right in the outfield. Solarte and Alonzo on the infield. Amarista at short. Spangenberg at second. And Derek Norris is behind the plate. Seventy eight degrees and a first pitch strike for Michael Bourne. And that's a little low. And even count. Michael was over three here last night. Those are his overall numbers. Bourne just two for twenty four since putting on a Braves uniform. And a little dribbler toward third. Salarte's got it and throws on the run. One out. Here's Cameron Mabin. What a night he had last night. Two hits, two runs, a home run. His 10th home run of the season, establishing a new career high. And as we suspected, Joe, I talked with him before the game. He truly enjoyed that stroll around the bases last night. It was a very fun one to watch. It was more like a glide, feet barely touching the ground. And a liner over short. Third hit of the series for Cameron Mabin. And he has a long seven game hit streak now. This ball was hit so hard, Chip, that Justin Upton had to give ground to make sure it didn't eat him up. He had to play it on about the second or third hop, but he was giving ground into left center to try to play it. So Nick Markakis hits. Nick had a one for 14 drought that ended in the ninth inning with a single off Craig Kimbrell. San Diego won last night five to three. Colin Ray two and zero oh in his first two big league starts. Williams Perez suffered his fourth loss and Kimbrell had a very heavy workload in the ninth inning, allowing two hits and a walk and the third and final Atlanta run. Running game is always a problem against the Padres because Norris has thrown out 32 would be base stealers this year. He got Michael Bourne in the first last night. And no movement by Maven as the pitch off the plate one ball no strikes. Yeah and that's not insignificant. Those 32 caught stealing. It's the most by the Padres by a Padres catcher since 2001 Ben Davis had 34. And the most since 2012 in the National League when Yadier Molina had 32, and he's still got six weeks to go. So he's been a terrific find for San Diego behind the plate. Good lead by Maven, not going, and the pitch bounced to the right side. Spangenberg whirls and fires to second for one. Marquez beat the rap at first, and he'll stand there with two out. There are some Braves hitters with good numbers against James Shields in their career. Marquez was one, a 3.11 career average. AJ Przinsky is not. He's at 2.05 lifetime with a lot of at bats. AJ drove in run number two last night with a sixth inning single. He's got 38 driven in. And that's off the plate, ball one. Yeah, it was a big time clutch hit, too. A 
There's the changeup. Yeah, beauty. Padres press notes tell us that James Shields gets swinging and misses on 29% of his pitches. He's it's a high number. And he's seventh overall in the big leagues in strikeouts. Well, he is tough. And that's off the plate. Two balls at a strike. Shields was a 16th round pick 15 years ago by the Tampa Bay Rays. Big part of the Kansas City Royals run to the World Series last year. This is his first year in San Diego. And out of play foul. There were some who thought, Joe, this man at the trading deadline would be an attractive trade option because of the big contract. And there are some who think he still might be available in trade even after the non waiver trade deadline has passed. Yeah, but the days are dwindling on that too. He was a late sign by the Padres too. Nobody had picked him up. Swing and a miss. There's the change up. And Shields has his first strikeout. The Braves settle for a hit and leave a runner stranded. Matt Whistler goes to work. The former Padre looks to do good work. No score. But 57 and 62, and they get to feast their eyes on one of their former prized prospects, Matt Whistler. When I talked in the opening comments about Matt needing to limit base runners, here's leading into it part of the problem. Base is empty, nobody on. He's given up a 356 average. He is ninth in the league in whip, average walks and hits per nine innings at 1.6. That's a very high number. And that gets us to the Ford keys to pitching success tonight. Limit the base runners. Too many of them. He's having to work out of the stretch constantly. Left-handed hitters, especially, hitting him at right at a 350 clip. And of his eight homers allowed, six to lefties. Switch hitter Jan Hervis Solarte leads off for the Padres. And Whistler's first is off the plate, says Chris Guccione, who's got the dish. One ball, no strikes. Three and zero. Oh. Last three starts, six walks in 15 innings, four homers allowed by Matt Whistler, and that one caught the plate. Three and one now. Lead off walk. 
And that's how the Padres starting batting order gets going. Salarte at first, Spangenberg second, Matt Kemp third on their Academy Sports starting nine. Justin Upton cleans up, Alonzo Norris, Melvin Upton in center field, Alexi Amaris to the shortstop, and James Shields hits ninth. That's butted behind the plate. Fouls, strike one. Blaze finally figured something out with Spangenberg last night. He was hitless in three tries, but it's still seven for 19 this year against Braves pitching. And his attempt at a bunt base hit, indicative of the fact that he attempts more bunt hits than anybody in their lineup. Solarte does not run much, even though he's a leadoff guy. One for two. Getting nerves, perhaps from Matt Whistler. Ball's moving; it's tailing off the plate. Nothing wrong with movement. That's cued foul, and the changeup earns Whistler a second strike. One and two, the count for Corey Spangenberg. Had a three-hit game against the Braves back in Atlanta. Swing and a miss. Good live fastball at 95 miles an hour. And Whistler has out number one. Here's his defense. It was a very good defense last night. Born Mabin and Markakis left to right in the outfield. Tradoslavich starts at first. Peterson Simmons, Garcia around the horn. A.J. Brzezinski back behind the plate. Michael Bourne had a great catch for Atlanta last night. And so did Justin Upton for the Padres. Had a great catch diving on the, the uh, warning track in foul territory in Atlanta on Sunday. Matt Kemp had a couple of hits last night, including a fifth inning homer. And he's backed off the plate. Strike one. Now, if you weren't with us last night, we talked about how his success in recent days has been. Hitting the ball up the middle and to right field. His home run was to right field last night, too. So that first pitch inside, Braves might be trying to tie him up a little bit. One ball, one strike for Matt Kemp. Padres are getting real good production out of Kemp and Justin Upton. Will Myers has been out most of the year with a bad wrist. Kemp signed through 2019. Big contract. The Dodgers are paying a lot of that freight for the 30 year old right fielder. Had his fifth 20 homer season last year. He's got a shot at 20 this year. He's at 14 right now. 1-1 one, one pitch. Didn't get it. 1-2. and two. Good breaking ball. Thank you, pardon. That one was moving the other way. That one was running away from Matt Kemp. It actually looked like a cutter.
Ground ball left side. Garcia got it. Fired to second and got the force. Nice play. Adonis Garcia had a little trouble getting it out of the leather. But he was able to force Salarte for out number two. There's that Braves defense again. That might have gotten through for a hit too. And that was his only play that he was going to have. Cut down the lead runner. Well done. Justin Upton two for three last night. Fifteen of his twenty homers as we mentioned last night have come in his home ballpark. And Matt missed outside ball one. Pitch. Didn't get the call. He's got a lively fastball tonight, doesn't he? 93, he's touched 95 a time or two. And now a dangerous 2 0 pitch. That is something we talked about. With uh, Fulton a few days ago, that when he gets to two and zero, oh, three and one counts, he's got to be able to go to his secondary pitches and count on them to be a strike. There was a curveball, two and zero, oh, and a good pitch. Yonder Alonso, the first baseman's on deck. Be surprised at all to see him throw a change up here. But it looked like a fastball sign. It was a fastball, and Upton didn't get it. Another one at 95, too, Chip. I, I don't remember seeing too many 95s from Matt Whistler. Usually it's 93, 94 tops. Well, you figured he'd be fired up. You figured he'd yeah. be emotional in the first inning. See if he can get out of it here with Kemp ready to roll from first on a full count pitch. There he goes, and it's ball four outside. Second walk of the inning. And Yonder Alonso will hit with two outs. So here's one of those left handed bats you have to worry about. Alonzo had two hits last night, including a big eighth inning home run. He also doubled and scored. That sliced out of play. Foul strike one for Yonder Alonzo. Lefties at 349 and six homers, 259 and two for the right handers. They don't have any hits this inning. But they do have two base runners thanks to the walk. So base is empty. We talked about base runners. Runners on 243, runners in scoring position, over 260 in both of those categories. High numbers. Which leads to a lot of high stress pitches. Whistler has another one to make here. One ball, one strike. And it's grounded to first. Nice pick by Joey T. He'll step on the bag. And that retires the side. The Padres got a couple of walks, couldn't cash them in, and we're off to the second inning. No score.
Let's take a look at tonight's AT&T U-verse trivia question. Since 2006, James Shields has recorded the fifth most complete games in baseball. Who has the most? So in nine years, 22 complete games is the fifth most number in the major leagues. Because we're in San Diego, I think, at Jake Peavy. Great First answer. Nine years. First name that popped into my head was a man that uses a trick pitch and can be very durable, R.A. Dickey. We won a mm -hmm. Cy Young with the Mets a couple of years ago. He's been pitching great for Toronto of late. There's Garcia swings and misses. David Price takes the ball deep. CC Sabathia used to take the ball deep into games. Adam Wainwright. A lot of choices on the trivia tonight. Swing and a high fly ball deep left. Upton back on the warning track. Can't find it. Now does. And it drops in front of him in deep left field. Upton lost it. And Garcia stands at second with nobody out. Well, I understand why he went back to the warning track right away because it looked like when it came off the bat, this was going in the seats. But as soon as he got there, he realized that it wasn't hit as well as he thought. So there's a break for Atlanta. Need to capitalize. Get him over. Get him in. Jace Peterson the batter. Justin thought he left that behind in Atlanta that. Losing balls in the gloaming. That's got to be just an awful feeling, doesn't it? Because you know it's got to come down, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> somewhere. Know, somewhere. Good curveball from James Shields has Jace Peterson behind the count. Jace had an RBI hit against Kimbrell last night. Boy, an early run would be wonderful for Matt Whistler. May surprise you that of all the brave starters this year, Matt Whistler has the highest individual run support on the team. At 3.7 runs per game. One and two. Big high leg kick, big motion. And then just a parachute ball that didn't get there. Good stop by Norris. We made a good one last night on a ball in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Tordoslovich on deck. Garcia leads. Here it comes. And a swing and a miss. Three strikes on breaking balls takes care of Jace Peterson. Shields has his second strike out of the game. One of the things that you can do if you're really wanting to get a ball inside so you can turn on it, pull it to the right side, is crowd the plate. He's hit eight batters, so you know he's not going to let you climb on top of the plate. But if you do that and challenge him to come in, then it's a little easier maybe to get something to hit to the right side instead of having to reach. Hitters just don't do that anymore. Everybody just has a toe hold. They have a spot. They go to it no matter what the situation, no matter what the count, no matter who the pitcher is. We'll see if Peterson tries that in his second at bat. Trudoslovich 
up for the first time and he's a little late one ball one strike. Pretty sunset. Mr. Shields has all the pitches working so far tonight. Let's check this one out on our PNC Bank box tracks. Chris Guccione, very generous there. Very. That one's outside, two and two. See another pitch. James Shields, no kid. He's 33. He'll turn 34 in December. Had some issues in the World Series last year against the Giants. Two World Series starts, seven earned runs in nine innings, 15 hits. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where this big game nickname came from. Because I was looking at his postseason numbers for his career, nothing jumped out at me. Kansas City was a wild card team last year. He pitched the wild card game against Oakland, went five innings, gave up five, four runs in those five innings, and yet they still won. Well, maybe that came from his days in Tampa Bay when the Rays were becoming relevant. Double digit win totals in six consecutive seasons with the Rays in both years with the Royals. 27 wins in Kansas City. This year he's 8 and 5. Well, he's, he's got 122 Major League wins. There's no questioning that. Swing and a miss. Tardoslovich is strikeout victim number three. Braves in danger of wasting a gift double off the bat of Garcia to start the inning. All three strikeouts on the changeup. AJ fanned in the first on a changeup. Let's see if Simmons can poke one to the right side and bring home Garcia. Two outs. Breaking ball a strike. He cued it to the right side. Now it's a race to the bag, and Alonzo's going to win it. Braves got a leadoff double, couldn't advance or bring home Garcia, and we're still scoreless.
exclusively through the 2016 opening day four game plan. That plan comes with tickets to opening day next year, along with three great weekend matchups this year against the Yankees, Mets, and the Cardinals. It's a limited time offer. Get your 2016 opening day four game plan at Braves.com slash four game today. So Whistler had a couple of walks, had a couple of base runners, but got a couple of good defensive plays to escape damage in the opening inning. Yeah, and the first inning has been problematic like it has been for all the Braves starters. He had given up seven runs in his first ten starts in the first inning. A couple of homers. So he dodged that bullet. Now he can settle in. We've been talking about Norris and all the great work he's doing defensively. He's having a great offensive year. His average isn't much to write home about, but 13 homers, 54 driven in. What a great acquisition he was. Yeah, all the hue and cry about Yasmani Grandal going to the Dodgers. And, well, the Padres really messed up that situation. Well, but from an offensive and defensive standpoint, Norris has been just fine for him. And that's ripped foul back and out of play. And lately, he's hit in six straight. Norris came from the A's with right handed pitchers Seth Stretch and Cash for pitchers AJ, excuse me, RJ Alvarez and Jesse Hahn. And that's ripped back out of play foul. All star catcher last year for Oakland. Goddard to Kansas. Norris, you might recall, was originally a Washington National. They traded him to Oakland for Gio Gonzalez. That's in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Part of the learning curve for a young pitcher, resolving at bats with as little effort as possible. Matt's already had several deep counts in the game. And Norris will see another pitch. And it's right off his foot. Foul. And down to third baseman Adonis Garcia. Still two and two. And remember last night, his swinging bunt hit one of the Big turning points of the game that got a run in. That scored the first Padres run. Will Venable follow with a two run single. Ooh, it wasn't his foot, it was no. higher than that. It was on the knee. Shin guard not high enough. Popped up. Jace Peterson has plenty of room. He'll backpedal in shallow right. And Norris is the first out. That'll bring up Melvin Upton. Padres had a log jam in the outfield when Will Myers and Venable were here. Then they acquired Melvin Upton, which meant they had five outfielders for four spots. Venable's been traded. Myers is hurt, so Upton. You would figure he's going to get a lot of playing time here over the final six, seven weeks. And he takes a strike. He was on the disabled list with a sore foot. Remember that was plaguing him at the beginning of spring training. What a shame that Will Myers has missed as much time as he has with a wrist that. That's got to be a big concern for the Padres. And Upton's down on strikes. Second strikeout for Whistler. Two up, two down. Here's Amarista.
And that missed outside. One ball, no strikes. Amarista, a lifetime 234 hitter, batting just 199 this year. Former LA Angel traded Ernesto Frieri for him back in May of 2012. Alexi, a real solid utility player last year. Started 71 games at shortstop, 18 at second, 16 at third, 13 in center, and even one game in left. Two balls, two strikes. And that's launched into the seats and out of play. Another good crowd here tonight. They had 23,000 plus for game one of the series. And now a 2 2. He is golfed into right and a base hit. So a good piece of hitting by Amarista, the eighth place hitter. Reaches and he'll bring James Shields to the plate. Not where the target one is where AJ wanted it, but down and in. And a pretty good swing by a guy hitting a buck 99. Don't be fooled by Shields 137 average. He's been a very good big league hitter. A 213 average. And he had a good rip at that. And Whistler balked. Must not have paused enough. Well, he didn't come set. So no pitch. The count 0 and 1 for James Shields, who will try to help himself. And that's a low to the pitcher. Already 40 pitches from the young Braves right-hander Matt Whistler. His last three starts, he hasn't gone more than five and a third innings, but his pitch count has been 89, 95, and 96. So there has been there have been very few quick outs for him in his last three starts. He did not have a perfect one two three inning in his last start against Tampa Bay. He had one one two three inning in his start against the Marlins on August 6th. Too many base runners. And he had two in his start on August the 1st. That is a heavy workload. Three in his last three starts. AJ took a shot off the catcher's mask and Shields is still alive, full count. He just walked the pitcher. On a breaking ball. He walked up to not a breaking ball.
They're not sure about the count here. I thought the count was right because they took it off the board on the balk. They're going to have to perhaps go to review. Well, we had on our scoreboard on our Fox box 0-1 because on the balk it was a dead ball. Correct. So it should not have been a 1-1 count. It should have been 0-1. And, and now Pat Murphy wants an explanation as to what the umpires are taking a look at. That's exactly what's happened. They've maybe lost track of the count. So Shields has come back, grabbed his batting helmet and the bat, put the protective device on the left ankle, and he might have to see another pitch here. Well, that may be why they threw a slider, thinking it was really two and two. So we've got the pitch sequence for Shields. Ball one. Strike one. Two and one. Two and two. Three and two. It was Shields who turned around and said ball four. So according to that pitch sequence, it should be a full count. Right. And that's what A.J. Pruszynski was barking about with Chris Cuccioni behind the plate. I think Shields knows too. So it happens to the hitters, it happens to the pitchers, sometimes it happens to the umpires. But remember, the balk was in play, so that pitch did not count. It just took us a few seconds to rewind and, and watch the pitch sequence. What in the world could possibly be taking this long? I'm not sure if they're in touch with New York or if they're in touch with MLB's replay center in San Francisco, just down the street from AT&T Park. Or if they're listening to some tunes from Boz Skaggs. I could, don't know. Could be. Could be. Whistler wisely will make a few warm up tosses here. Looks like we're near an answer. And it is a 3 2 count. So that explains the pitch selection. My guess is home plate umpire forgot to change his clicker after the balk and the pitch that was ruled a ball. Could be. That's just a guess. So the correct count is full. Three minutes and 12 seconds on the count review. Another payoff pitch. In the air to center. Maven got a good jump. And that will retire James Shields and the Padres. Whistler leads off the third, still scoreless.
Ronaldo. Fans, now it's time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag SouthDataStrongFan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Joe and Chip with you in San Diego, James Shields, Matt Whistler. And we head to the third inning. It'll be a brave starter leading things off. Braves had a one-out single in the first, a leadoff double in the second, but couldn't get anything across against Shields in the first two innings. Somehow, some way, the Braves have to break the hex that is San Diego. The Braves have lost eight straight games to the Padres here in San Diego. Salarte makes a nice play and gets Whistler one out. Salarte has shown some real good range in this series already. Michael Bohr in the batter. He tapped out to third his first time up. And a strike. Even count. Born and Swisher are now Braves. Chris Johnson is a member of the Indians. He's already on the disabled list. No fans heard about that. A strike at the knees. Chris was apparently bitten by a spider on his hand, and that hand got infected, and he had to go to the DL. One ball, two strikes. Two and two. It's scary stuff. Any any infection like that anymore? You never know what it might lead to. Oh, Shields thought he had the outside corner shaved and didn't get the call. Full count. Check out PNC Bank again. Broke around the plate. And that's popped foul into the stands. We'll do it again. Mets won tonight. They beat Baltimore at Oriole Park. 5-3 was the final score. So New York will maintain its big league in the East. Big lead in the East, I should say. Toronto came back and beat the Phillies 8-5 today at Citizens Bank. Arizona and the Pirates are tied 8-8 in the 11th. And the backs beat Garrett Cole yesterday. 3-2 pitch. Strike three. Breaking ball. Bourne took it. And he's out number two. Looked like a breaking ball that he gave up on. And it was a good pitch. And you're right, Chip. He's got them all working tonight so far. Base is empty for Cameron Maben, who hit a sizzling single with one out in the first. And that one all the way to the backstop, ball one. Nationals are tied 6 6 with the Rockies in the seventh. Games at Coors Field in Denver. Two and oh. Cameron looking for 
his sixth consecutive multi hit game. He's had an extra base hit in all five of his multis so far during this run. If he gets to six games with an extra base hit among his multi hit games, he'll be the third Brave ever to do that. Henry Aaron and Kelly Johnson were the other two. He just seems to be seeing the ball so well. He's not even chasing borderline pitches. And you can see how carefully they're pitching him as a result. So Shields will walk. He'll face Nick Markakis. Nick grounded into a force play in the Braves first. Part of the running game that's difficult for opponents when Norris is catching and Shields is pitching. He's got a ton of pickoffs. That's a tough combo. One ball, no strikes. Good lead. Not going. And Nick took a strike. Even count. Seen many swings like that from Nick Markakis this year. Tells you how good Shields stuff is so far tonight. Yeah. He had kind of made up his mind to swing and then tried to lay off. Got caught in between. He's two for his last 16. Runner goes and Nick. Sprayed it foul. That delivery. Now it's two and two. Early in the count, it looked like Nick was trying to get something to pull in the hole on the right side. Now, of course, he's just battling because he fell behind. And Shields has had an assortment. Again, Maven runs, and again, Marquecas sprays a foul. Nick Markakis. Barely got a piece of that. Mm -hmm. 
Shields tied with Tyson Ross for the team lead and wins with eight. They have two double digit losers on their staff Andrew Kashner and Ian Kennedy. And Marquez didn't get it. And the battle won by James Shields. He had to work hard for strikeout number five, but the top of his order goes to work in a scoreless game next. is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Joe and Chip with you from San Diego. We will sadly have to leave this beautiful place after the game tomorrow, 1240. Local time start for game three of the series. And as you see, the Padres are on deck for the All-Star game next season. Well, that'll be a star-spangled affair in this beautiful downtown park which has really changed the gas lamp district the area by the convention center and downtown San Diego you won't hear too many complaints from guys selected to the all-star game no. next year Ground ball right side. Peterson's got that. And Salarte is an easy out. That's how the home third begins tonight. And let's hope it's a fast inning for Matt Whistler. He just gave Garcia a heads up that Spangenberg might try to bunt. Didn't we have a kid named Spangenberg in our system? Mm -hmm. Driven toward right. Long run, Marcakis won't get it. It's up against the Oxy Clean sign. And Spangenberg on his way to third. The relay throw will come late. It's a one out triple. Good looking player. Yeah, he is. Got a pitch out in the middle of the zone. And when you hit it out toward the sandbox, it's almost a sure triple for a guy with his speed. Nice play by Nick to get it in as quickly as he did. This has been an area of maddening frustration for the Padres at times. They've struggled to get runners in from third with less than two out. A lot of strikeouts in this lineup. Matt Kemp with 114 of them. Infield comes in. And 
He's quickly behind in the count. Strike one. Hard to believe an offensive club that features Spangenberg and Kemp and Upton and Alonzo and Norris has been shut out 16 times. That is hard to figure. They don't walk a lot. They do strike out a lot in their next to last or our last I should say an on base percentage in National League play. Popped up. Long run to Doslovich and Peterson. And Jays tumbles into the stands. Great effort. Long run. But couldn't get there. It's 0-2. Chase called off Turdo like he thought he might have a play and didn't realize he was that close to the fence, obviously. So 0 and 2, let's see if he can make a good pitch and get him to chase. Matt Kemp. One and two. Kemp has 29 go ahead RBIs this year for the Padres. That's more than any other player in baseball. Two and two. Good try there on a change up. Third triple has him 90 feet away with the first run of the game. So from 0 and 2 to an even count. It's kind of hard to believe, but these two guys, like you're talking about, with regard to the shutouts chip the only National League team with two outfielders that have 60 or more RBIs here in San Diego Kemp and Alonso had homers here last night Whistler tries to finish him off here two and two one out fly ball center Maben sets up. Fast man to third. There's the catch. There's the tag. The throw is going to be up the first baseline. And Kemp has his 30th go ahead RBI on a sacrifice fly. It's 1 0 Padres. Well, he made it. He had a good at bat, Kemp, and he finally got a fastball he liked. Cameron got behind the baseball, came to it, but stepped the wrong way, stepped behind his front foot, which naturally pulls you then to the left, which is where he pulled it over to the first baseline. Said that last night, but Cameron and Nick Marcakis have got to work on their footwork when they're throwing because they kill all momentum that they build up trying to make a throw like that. So a one out triple and a sacrifice fly puts the Padres in front. Camp having a big second half for San Diego. They lead one nothing. Upton takes ball two. Popped him up. Maben in center comes galloping in. And he's got plenty of room and that'll retire the side. One run, one hit, nobody left. Time for the Braves bats to go to work. Part of the order coming up, down a run.
great work down by the Braves dugout tonight. Fans, make sure to get your tickets for Julio Tehran bobblehead night. September 10th, when the Mets come to town, the first 20,000 guests get a bobblehead featuring Braves pitcher Julio Tehran, brought to you by Grady Hospital. Get your tickets today. Go to braves.com slash tickets. There's Julio. He's been pitching better of late. And he will get the ball here tomorrow afternoon. Hola, Julio. A.J. Pruszynski takes outside. Mentioned the Mets. They beat Baltimore 5-3 today. That game was ordered at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. That was Jake DeGrom. He pitched for New York. Kevin Gossman was the man that started for the Orioles. He's the kid that pitched so well against the Braves when we faced the Orioles in Baltimore. Good cut by A.J. Fouled back. Two balls. One strike. Good at bat so far for Przinski. Three and one your count. Now the Padres will employ a shift and they do that when they get to a count where they don't think AJ will bunt. Well he'll take a walk there's a start tying run aboard for the Braves Brzezinski has earned has earned the second walk from James Shields tonight and here's Garcia who had a pop fly that was lost by Justin Upton in left field a gift double his sixth. Shields walked four in his last start against the Reds in six and a third innings. Lost Przinski's behind Garcia 2-0. Oh. And mad about it. Not surprising that Shields is doing what he's doing as far as the strikeout ball is concerned. He averages almost 11 strikeouts per nine innings pitched at home, where he's won four and lost two this year. Ground ball right side. Beautiful piece of hitting by Garcia. The Braves have two on with nobody out. Nice job there. He's hit some long balls that way, but we don't often see him try to hit the ball to right field, but he got a breaking ball up. And didn't try to do too much with it. Nice job by Adonis. So Jace Peterson's the hitter. Salarte creeps in on the grass at third base, thinking Jace might try to bunt. Let's see if he does with nobody out. No sign of the first pitch and a strike. Wouldn't be a bad play. Problem though is Jace has been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position and men on base all year. Maybe he can split a gap and put the Braves in front. One ball, one strike. Yeah, it's early enough in the ball game to play for a big inning. That's the pitch that gave Peterson trouble his first time up. Yeah, three swings and misses in the second inning on that one. Nice work at home. 
Only the long balls really to write home about on the road a 218 average. When I saw those today I was really surprised. One ball two strikes. And Norris couldn't hang on but if you look at that number again that that graphic almost twice as many road RBIs. Well that's because on the home runs he's he's hit a grand slam on the road. He's hit a couple of three run homers on the road. Those have added up for him. One ball two strikes. I was just looking at what I talked about his first at bat when he was off the plate with a runner at second nobody out and they kept throwing those breaking balls away down and away. Tough to pull those pitches and at least from our vantage point from the center field camera it looks like he's way off the plate. I know he's not. But all they've got to do is set up away and hope especially when they're ahead in the count and hope that he chases something back door. Another breaking ball and Shields might have gotten away with a pitch there. He did. That was not a good one. Swing and a base hit to right. That'll drop in front of Kemp. The throw comes into second. It's late and the bases are loaded. Peterson hit that ball right on the button. And A.J. Prasinski likes that. He's 90 feet away and the Braves have him loaded with nobody out. Too many curve balls and another one up. And he combed that one. It's the Padres' turn to sweat a bit. Jaroslavich struck out in the second inning. A walk and back to back singles. And no place to put Joey. Ball one. He could go ahead and look off speed if he wants early in the count. Shields wants a ground ball. He's hoping that he'll pound one in the ground and Turto four for his last 10 with three doubles. Two strikes. That was the changeup. Now he's got to look fastball and adjust to those others. He's tried that outside corner a couple of times and hasn't had much luck since the first inning. Did he go? No swing. Now Shields has to throw him a strike or he'll surrender at least one run. Nice patience by Joey. Still got to look fastball. Nice fight off there, the change up. James Shields has had three or four pitches miss badly up in the zone in this inning. Mm -hmm. It hasn't cost him anything yet, but he does have a big mess. Base is loaded.
Changeup got him. One out. He wouldn't give up on the changeup. Had enough confidence in it, even though he lived to tell about it after that one foul ball that was up. There's another one. So Simmons becomes the key man in the inning. Hamilton rolled out to first in the second inning. Strike one. He's been throwing a lot of first pitch sliders. Doesn't seem to throw many after that. Stays fastball change up after that. And as soon as I said that, he throws them back to back. Amberton's done good work with the bases loaded. As you see, four for ten. Shields ready for his 25th pitch of the inning. He's not the same guy right now. Well, he's not the same guy with his fastball, that's for sure. He's been effective with the changeup. And he's got a guy at the plate who's hit into a lot of double plays. So he's hoping for another rollover on a changeup from Simmons. Bouncing ball to short. Second one first is a double play, and that's how you earn the name big game. For James Shields. Bases loaded, nobody out. A strikeout and a double play preserves a 1 0 Padres lead. against James Shields and fans as we promised you earlier tonight we've selected our data strong fan photo of the game tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag South data strong fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile Freddie Freeman photo bombing that baby Olivia Gunter I guess you probably wanted Freddie in the picture didn't you that's a good one and Freddie will be in your picture at home we presume tomorrow afternoon mm -hmm. he is with the club in San Diego tonight and is expected to be activated tomorrow. Yonder Alonso former Reds first round pick is 0 for 1 and Whistler missed low to him one ball one strike. They're 
in the 13th inning in Pittsburgh. Diamondbacks eight, Pirates eight. Royals lead the Reds 3 1 in the 13th inning. Now the late nights back east. To third, Garcia gets the hop, loads up, and got his man by a step, one down. They're back in action in Chicago where the Tigers lead the Cubs 5 2. They had a long rain delay at Wrigley Field. Ball was flying out of the ballpark in the early innings. We'll see what happens the rest of the way. Miguel Cabrera, by the way, is back and playing for Detroit. Here's Norris riding a six game hitting streak. He popped out, leading off the San Diego second. Detroit is 15 games out of first. I wonder where Dave Dombrowski is going to end up. A talented former general manager of the Tigers. Well, Gretchen has the answer for us. And we'll pass that to you here in a moment. One ball, no strikes. Of course, Gretchen has all the answers, as we know. Dave Dombrowski mm -hmm. was hired by the Boston Red Sox today. Larry Lucchino, you might recall, is going to retire at season's end. So Dave Dombrowski is hired in some capacity in Boston. A bullet into center field by Derek Norris. It's actually left center. Maven cuts it off. He's going to try for two. Here comes the throw. It's going to be off target. And Norris has a seven-game hitting streak. And his 26th double. He was thinking double all the way as soon as that ball got by Andrelton Simmons. He was off to the races. He's got three stolen bases this year, too. So here's Melvin Upton. He struck out his first time up. And back to the screen. More on Dave Dombrowski. Gretchen tells us he's been hired as the president of baseball operations. And apparently, general manager Ben Charrington is out. Huh. Well, they finished last, won the World Series, finished last. It looks like they might finish last again. Three out of the last four years with a World Championship mixed in. And with a lot of guys making a lot of money. Ramirez, Sandoval, David Ortiz. They dished out a lot of money. Rick Hanley Ramirez and Sandoval last year. How about Rick Porcello? 80 million bucks, and he's been. Big disappointment in Boston. Two quick strikes for Melvin Upton. A oh, base hit to center. Here comes Norris around third. Maven fumbles the ball. Upton thought about advancing. The throw over shoots second base. And Melvin Upton hurts his former club, drives home Norris to make it a 2 0 game. Twenty seventh RBI on a fastball that had a lot of the plate. Looked like Jace Peterson was playing up the middle in a way to try to bird dog Norris a little bit to hold him close. Again, Whistler gets two strikes, can't finish him off, and this is an area of concern for a starting pitcher. A triple, single, and double for the Padres, dating back to the start of the third inning and the second time through the order. San Diego extends the lead. Boy, how often do you see it? A team loads the bases, doesn't score. The other team does the next time they bat. That's what's happened here in the fourth. Well, his walks and hits to innings pitch, we told you about it, but coming into the game at 1.6, which is very high. The ninth highest in the National League. And tonight, four hits, two walks, and three and a third. That's somewhere in that same vicinity. Oh. 
No balls at a strike. This, however, is what you have to live with with a young starter. And that's an amazing stat. Yes, it is. Thank you, Gretchen. You've said so many times from a hitter's perspective, well, fairly, frankly, from anybody's perspective, this is a consistent and constant game of adjustments. Whistler started out in great form, 5 and 1 in his first seven games. One loss in his last three starts, and almost a run per inning allowed. He's 22 years old. That's what we have to keep in mind, and that he's got a very bright future, but. Right now, the inconsistencies are something you're just going to have to accept. Good curveball, one ball, two strikes for Amarista. The pitches are there. He's got four good ones. But locating, especially his fastball, to both sides of the plate is going to be something that he's still working on. Close play at first, Upton barely back. Another close play that throws. A little lower, they might have up to nail. Getting closer all the time. Line to third, throw to first, double play. Inning over. His brother got doubled up on the same play last night. Great so the throw. Ca catch and throw indeed. A big pardon, Joe ends the inning. San Diego, though, adds a second run. We head to the fifth. Fields, who's never beaten the Braves, but he's got a lead heading to the fifth. He's also our AT&T Universe trivia question tonight. Since 2006, he's got the fifth most complete games in the big leagues. Who has the most? 
I've got like 10 guys yeah. on my list, so I'm going to go with Adam Wainwright. I'll say David Price, his former teammate with the Tampa Bay Rays. Wainwright and Price is our guesstimation. Let's see if we're right. He was not on my list. No. Well, I hate that when we don't even have a sniff at it. Roy Halladay had 47 complete games in that stretch. And he's been out of the game two years now, right? Yeah. Amazing. Whistler is down on strikes. That's the first out of the fifth inning. Seven strikeouts for Shields. Obviously, the Braves wasted a golden opportunity last inning. Bases loaded, nobody out, didn't score. But this bad run they are on not only just in San Diego but on the road period they're 20 games under 500 on the road this year 21 and 41 and a lot of it has to do with lack of offense just not scoring lost eight in a row in this part and in the last 11 in San Diego the Braves have scored 2.3 runs a 204 batting average and have lost 10 of those 11 games but if you think positively you hope Freddie Freeman comes back and provides a spark and can stay healthy the rest of the summer ERA over four and three quarters kind of Consistent with what we saw last night when the Braves lost five to three. Lashed at first. Tell you what, Michael Bourne. What they say in Major League, get that guy, or Bull Durham, get him a rooster. He needs something to break his curse at the plate. Another yeah. rocket that goes unrewarded. Candlesticks make a nice gift, too. There's nothing falling in for Michael. Two outs. Maven has a single and a walk tonight. Up the middle. Spangenberg and the scoop at first. Nice play by Yonder Alonso. Now all of a sudden, James Shields is in a groove. He'll lead off the fifth with a two-run lead. Today, 
But Freddie also has taken his coach's role seriously. He went up to Cameron Maven and said, look, even though I'm not in the ball game tonight, what I need from you is I need a six consecutive game of multiple hits since Cameron has gone five straight with two hits. And Cameron said, I don't really keep track of my stats like that. Freddie quickly called him a liar in this one around the clubhouse and tried to pump everybody up. So even though he's not in there trying to be a positive influence tonight before we hopefully, guys, see that big bat and the defense at first tomorrow. Yeah, it's been missed, Andre. There's no doubt about it. Braves were able to tread water the first time Freddie went to the disabled list, but this time it's been much tougher sledding. You remember the great job that Kelly Johnson and Juan Uribe did in Freddie's absence. They were traded to the Mets. So that's three offensive holes that were left in the lineup for Atlanta. As that one is rocketed off Whistler. Let's see if Matt's all right. He made the play, and that got him solid. Got him either on the back of the right arm or the shoulder. So the pitcher for the Yankees get hit in the face of the line drive last night. I'm glad that wasn't the case here. Yep, right on the arm. The pitching arm. Yeah. One pitch, he says he's fine. At least it was high up on the arm, not on the elbow. So we go back to the top of the order, and Jon Hervis Salarte is 0 for 1. And a little late. That's popped out of play foul. Still 0 2. Two runs, four hits for the Padres. They've left three on base. No runs, four hits for the Braves, who've left five, including the bases loaded tonight. Three of their five left on have been in scoring position. Yeah. Shields got exactly what he needed. Strike out and a double play. To the right side. Oh, Jace Peterson flagged that baby down. It looked like that ball was by him by the time he got a glove on it. Yeah, I think I think Jace has really improved as the year's gone on. Not that he wasn't a pretty good second baseman to begin with, but I just think day in and day out, the more chances he's received and reaction to the ball off the bat, he's just gotten better as time has gone on. Bunt try by Spangenberg. It's a good one. Throw to first is down the right field line. The ball is backed up by Jace Peterson. It got caught up under the chair of one of the ushers or security people. And Spangenberg with a bunt hit will stick at first base with two outs. Yeah, I hope Trudoslovich is okay. He's halfway to the mound and his glove is almost into right field. That is. An incredibly dangerous play for a first baseman. Cliff Floyd had his wrist shattered on a play like that once. Terrific bunt. Again, tries more bunt hits than anybody on their team. But watch Joey reach across the line right in the path of the runner and basically clothesline Spangenberg. The glove went flying. So a 
two hit game for Corey Spangenberg. Mm. That hurt. Last thing Joey needs is another wrist problem. He got hurt in spring training on a tag play at third base. And he was the first baseman that day. The pitch to Kemp is inside ball one, and that cost Joey Tadoslovich a lot of time on the DL. Fifth bunt hit of the year for Spangenberg. 53 games were missed for Tradoslovich with a left wrist sprain. One ball, no strikes for Matt Kemp. Rabbit foul at third. This is right about where Whistler has been pitch count last four or five starts. 85 90 pitches after five innings. He's not through this fifth yet. Down in front of Michael Bourne. Spangenberg tried to fake him out. Throw to third is going to be in time. Spangenberg makes the third out at third base. He tried to deke Michael Bourne, but the Braves veteran outfielder had none of that. He threw him out to send us to the sixth inning. October 1st for a free post game concert brought to you by Coca Cola and Delta Airlines. Tickets are going fast. Get them now at Braves.com slash Sam Hunt. Two nothing behind James Shields. He goes through the lineup for a third time. He starts the sixth inning with Nick Markakis, AJ Prasinski, and Adonis Garcia. Shields. That was an 88 mile an hour fastball, but it looked kind of funky. 
Well, he's been given a sign a couple of times by Norris where he's twirled his finger around like a like a cutter. Maybe he's experimenting with that a little bit and picks his spots to do it. Just what the Braves hitters need to worry about another quality pitch from Shields. Uh -huh. who's really been on his game tonight. He has struck out seven. He's walked a couple of men pitched out of a bases loaded mess in the fourth. And serves up a fly ball shallow center. Upton is there and Melvin makes the play one out. A strike out and a walk is A.J. Pruszynski's offensive night to this point. Wonder if the little red-haired girl is at the game in Pittsburgh tonight. <laughs> I hope so. It's eight, eight, and the fourteenth now. Diamondbacks and the Pirates. Low to Pruszynski. One ball, no strikes. You mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast that Shields has never beaten the Braves. His lifetime 0-2 with a high ERA of 571. That includes a start this year that I said he lost. He actually got a no decision, but the Braves did win the game. AJ with a bolt to center, his first hit of the night, and his fifth hit against the Padres this year, and that brings the tying run to the dish. Garcia's 2-2. Kind of that same pitch. Trying to get it to sink. And it did right to the barrel of AJ's bat. Even count now, a ball and a strike. Giants lead the Cardinals 2 0, bottom of the ninth inning in St. Louis. Washington 11 6 over Colorado. That's in the eighth. Mets beat Baltimore 5 3. Looks like there'll be no change in the gap in the National League East tonight. Pitch. Swing and miss. 1 and 2. His durability, Shields' dur durability, has really been something else with his four straight years of 227 plus innings, eight straight years of 200 plus innings. To short, there's one, there's two. Shields gets another big double play ball. His second of the night. The Braves out of luck in the sixth.
Check out Joe our Mazda game summary. James Shields has a five-hit shutout working through his six innings of work. Mac- Matt Whistler's night is done. He'll be pulled here after five innings. Gave up only two runs. Kept his team in the ball game. Matt Kemp, an RBI, and Melvin Upton Jr., an RBI for the Padres. And the night is over for Matt Whistler. Five innings, 85 pitches, two runs. And now it's David Ardsmith's turn. He's on for the 30th time this year. He last worked a couple of days ago at home against Arizona. Struck out the side that inning and got the win. As the Braves got the home run, the walk-off homer from Cameron Mabin. So we'll hope that Whistler's shoulder's okay after getting plunked, but that may have something to do with it. A line drive off the bat of James Shields in the fifth inning for the first out. A couple of good uh, good defensive plays by the Braves ended the San Diego fifth. Downstairs for Justin Upton. He's sitting on 599 career RBIs. Showed you that graphic about how productive Kemp and Upton have been. Kemp with 30 go ahead RBIs this year now. Well, Justin's been clutch too. He's got 14 game winning RBIs this year. That's tied for the most in the major leagues. Two balls, no strikes from Ardsman. A live fastball missed. It's 3 0. Can't give him any more. The Padres pen begins to work. That's Sean Kelly. Belt high strike. Upton thought he was on his way to first. Three passes have not typically been a problem for David Ardsman. Only three walks in his last eight outings, never more than one. Rip toward left, and Bourne's going to have to chase that down at the fence. Up and around first on his way to second. The throw is late. It's a leadoff double for Justin Upton. This is a classic Justin Upton swing. Boy, stand back on that back leg. Hitting a pitch down the middle and just turning on it. Great extension. Had to hustle to get in there. The guy stayed back and hit against that firm front leg. Alonzo bats and takes a ball. It was nothing but business with regards to the Braves' decision to trade Justin Upton. They loved him in the clubhouse, loved how he played. Right. And he played great for the Braves. Hit 56 homers, drove in 172 runs. Scored 170 runs in two years. Played virtually every day. But a man of his talent in today's Major League Marketplace. He might be looking at a man that could earn $20, $25 million a year as a free agent this offseason. That's out of the Braves' price range. Corner outfielders with power are hard to come by. One ball, one strike. But the Braves loved what they got in return. Max Freed, Dustin Peterson, Malik Smith, Jace Peterson, and an international bonus slot. 
short term the trade maybe helps the Padres long term could be a great trade for the Braves all of those players I mentioned under team control for a long time Upton is a free agent Dodgers made some curious moves. Uh, Ron Renneke has been named their third base coach. He got fired earlier this year by Milwaukee. Lorenzo Bundy has moved to the dugout as a bench coach, and John Valentin is out as a coach for the Dodgers. Kind of an odd, odd move for a first place club. Fouled straight back. It's three and two. It's my understanding they've allegedly let a bunch of their international scouts go too because they've kind of used up all their slot money for international oh. signings and no reason to really have them out there on the road. Interesting. But they can pay $87 million to players who don't play for them. Got that covered. 3 2 pitch popped up. Born on the run had Alonzo played well. He's got it. And there's the first out. Here's Norris. He's doubled and scored. Norris now with a seven game hitting streak. Of course, we are in the Eastern Division. The Padres play out west. We don't see Norris or players like him an awful lot. And that's a shame. I like this guy's game. You mentioned his good work at the plate. Everybody knows about Yadier Molina and his defensive reputation. You throw out 32 base stealers. That's really impressive. That speak to speaks to his accuracy too. Good Getting point. It somewhere around the bag to, to catch that many guys. Nothing in one for Norris. In the air to center. Maybe on the run is going to have room. Upton's going to tag. He's going to move up to third base on a deep fly to center. Two out. Ball's not jumping tonight like it was yesterday, is it? No. No, I think it's a little cooler. There's not quite as much humidity tonight. Detweiler getting ready. Case Amarista comes up. Matt Whistler started tonight, went five innings, six hits, two runs, two walks, two strikeouts. Braves had a couple of chances to score, a leadoff double in the second, couldn't bring home Garcia. Bases loaded in the fourth. Could not score what would have been the game tying run. Up to the struck out has an RBI single. It was a sharply hit ball to right. And then he was erased on a line drive to third. Melvin was doubled up to end the fourth inning. High fly ball well hit. Born on the run. He's gone as far as he can go. And Melvin Upton. Murdered that baseball. His fourth home run. He might want to put in a call to Dan Ugla and Jeff Francoeur and talk about the damage they've done to the Braves this year. High fastball. No doubt about it. So a sixth inning homer makes it four nothing and now Arista pops one up foul over the Braves dugout. Home runs have been a problem for the Braves of late. 
on the road during this 16 of 18 losing streak. Braves have now allowed 24 homers. Bullpen ERA around five. Ardsma surrenders two here in the sixth. This month, the Braves have now given up six homers. They allowed 12 homers in June and July combined. Sharply hit up the middle. Three hits allowed by Arjun in the inning. And Shields is going to be called back with a big lead. And the Padres will go to their bench. Chance to save a few innings for James Shields, leading 4 0. They can turn things over to their bullpen. And it's going to be Brett Wallace, the former Astro. And it's going to be Ross Detweiler on to relieve David Ardsma. Two thirds of an inning for Ardsma. Three hits, two runs so far, including a homer. Wallace versus Detweiler in the sixth. Four nothing Padres. Professionally monitored in touch system with $1,800 in free equipment, including an exterior camera and touch screen door lock. Please visit cpisecurity.com. Four nothing San Diego, runner at first, two men out. And Braves fans, spend your weekends with us at Turner Field. We've got great weekend matchups coming up against the Yankees. Brian McCann will be back in town with the Bronx Bombers. The Mets and will try to spoil their hopes for a division title. The Cardinals will be in for the final home games of regular season play. Friday night fireworks every Friday night. Kids run the bases every Sunday. Weekends are a great time to spend some time with friends and family and catch the Braves in 2015. Get your tickets online, Braves.com, and plan your visit to Turner Field today. 15th appearance for Ross Detweiler. He's got a string of five straight shutout appearances working. And he's re uh, prevented 10 of the 13 runners from scoring that he has inherited. Brett Wallace, big star at Arizona State. Takes one under the chin. Hello. One ball, no strikes. Always pays to have your college coach become the major league manager. Padre signed him and he was in triple A at El Paso where Murphy was the manager before Bud Black was fired. 
and then called up June 19th. It was last in the big leagues with the Astros in 2013 when Bo Porter was his manager. Last year spent the entire season at Triple A with the Orioles and Toronto Triple A teams. He was a number one pick by the Cardinals back in 2008. He might have been traded for Lance Berkman. He was, uh, well, he was first traded for Matt Holiday. Holiday, okay. And then he's traded to Toronto for Michael Taylor. Houston got him for Anthony Ghost. And then his minor league odyssey began. Bouncing ball foul. Made the club out of spring training in 2013, but started the year one for 24 and was sent out to Triple A. 13 home runs from June 25th to the end of the season. That's inside full count to Brett Wallace and for James Shields. Five hits, two walks, seven strikeouts in six scoreless innings. Two big double plays, too, induced by the San Diego starter. Ball four. So neither Archman nor Detweiler can retire the first batter they were assigned. And they're at first and second for the top of the order. Been a while for James Shields since he's earned a win. Over a month. His last victory was July 17th against the Rockies. Three no decisions and two losses since that win at home. Braves had two clean innings last night, the first and the eighth. They've had none tonight. Swing and a drive. Bell to deep left by Salarte. Second deck. Three run homer. Wow. I think he knew it. Let her high fastball skip and a go. Oh. Right in his wheelhouse. Yeah, that was that went a long way. It sure did. So the Padres are routing the Braves seven zip now on ten hits. Two homers. Solarte's eighth gives him 45 runs batted in. And this is why I said last night, in many ways, the Padres' offense this year is reminiscent of what the Braves saw in 2014. When they're hitting home runs and making consistent contact, they can be a real tough bunch to retire. But when they get the old swing and miss working collectively, they are a maddeningly frustrating team. So Ardsma and Detweiler surrender homers. Solartes went 408 feet. Now 
Now Spangenberg walks. This isn't going according to plan. No, sir. And now Kemp hits the ninth man to bat in the inning. Game ever end in Pittsburgh? We may catch him. <laughs> He's in the 14th at last count. It was 8 8. Nationals are putting a whooping on the Rockies tonight, so they're getting some of their frustration out. 15 runs tonight. Zimmerman and David Hale. David Hale was starting for the first time since coming off the DL with a bad groin. Nationals trying to snap a six game losing streak tonight to be in good shape. Pittsburgh won nine to eight. Did they? Mm -hmm. He has been. A left handed specialist to be sure. But he walked the first guy he was brought in to face the left hander. And that led to trouble to with the right handers. Kemp has a second hit. And the Padres have 11 of them. Upton got it started with a leadoff double. That's popped up out of play foul. One ball, one strike. That game in St. Louis was a good one. Giants beat the Cardinals 2 0. Ryan Vogelsong started. Supposed to be Mike Leake's turn, but he's still not ready to go with that bad hamstring. Dodgers in Oakland tied 1 1 in the seventh. That's Clayton Kershaw and Felix Dubrant. See what Kershaw's done in his last six games? It's pretty good. <laughs> Speaking of making up for lost time. Yeah. Eight or more innings in five of his last six outings. He's 5 0 with a 0.75 earned run average. And he's only walked four men in that stretch. That's rolled foul past Glenn Hoffman. San Diego third base coach and older brother of great closer Trevor Hoffman. I Trevor's eligible for the Hall of Fame next year, isn't he? If not next year, the year it's it's right around the corner. It sounds so odd to say, but he had a devastating changeup. <laughs> Oh, 
Ooh. Another one of those high fastballs that Justin likes, but he missed that one. When the Padres went to the World Series against the Yankees a few years ago, I was at the ball game and the Yankees were on their way to clinching. He came in and they were playing Hell's Bells on the speakers at Qualcomm Stadium. And I thought the place was going to come down. Yeah. It was. With all due respect to Craig Kimbrell or John Smoltz and his Dancing Queen entrance music, <laughs> when they played Hell's Bells and Trevor Hoffman came in, it was awesome. It was electric. Another 3 2 count. Twenty five pitches for Detweiler. He came in just to get one out. Yeah, came in with two outs. Walk, Homer, walk, single. And now three and two for Upton again. 14 balls, 11 strikes. Ball four. Mama said there'd be days like this, and for Ardsma and Detweiler, tonight is one of those nights. Five runs are in off the Braves veteran relievers. Freddie Gonzalez went to the home plate umpire. Chris Guccione might have a couple of changes here. Looks like we will. Adonis Garcia is making his way to the dugout bench. Detweiler is done. Padres have him loaded, and they've got a big lead. And your Atlanta area Mazda dealers. Driving matters. Big crowd having fun tonight. Seven runs on 11 hits for the Padres here at the stadium, which dare not speak its name. Follow the Braves wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and more. At MLB.com at bat for your smartphone. For your tablet. Yonder Alonzo is the 11th man to hit in the inning. And Andrew McKirahan is charged with ending the misery in the Atlanta bottom half of the sixth. Pedro Siriaco checks in. He'll play third base. 
missing Hill being the number nine spot on the lineup card. And that one almost over the head of Alonzo. E.J. Brzezinski turned back to the home plate umpire Chris Guccione like heads up. <laughs> Incoming. Alonzo 0 for 3 tonight. To short. And the throw's going to go to first. And that ends the inning. Ardsma, Detweiler, and McCurahan get three outs, but not before the Padres score five runs on two long homers. Melvin Upton hits a two run shot. James Shields like that. Salarte went 408 feet away. However, Atlanta had a chance to really make things interesting in the fourth inning, but James Shields got it done and earns our Toyota key play of the game. Bases loaded, nobody out, struck out Terdoslovich, got the ground ball from Andrelton Simmons. And the Padres turned it to end the inning and end the threat. And you can see James is pretty fired up, fired up about that. And he will depart with a nice 7-0 lead now. And Adrissimer Despagne will come on and pitch. The native of Cuba signed as a free agent by the Padres in May of 2014. Went four and seven in 16 starts last year. He started and relieved this year for San Diego. And Joe, the numbers indicate he's been better as a yeah. relief pitcher. Five plus ERA as a starter. Three ERA as a reliever. Twenty eight thousand three ninety five at the ballpark tonight. And Jace Peterson looks at a ball off the plate. Spagna can run it up there as high as ninety four ninety five. Slider as a starter he's had. All the pitches curveball change up too, but mostly as a reliever fastball slider. Despagna pitched with the Industriales in Havana for eight years before coming to America and became the first ever Cuban to start a game in Padres franchise history. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I wonder if he would have played with Adonis Garcia. He was also with the Industriales. Tap to the left side. Salarte, nice play. Cut it off and threw a strike in time. One down. He's playing really well at third base for them. Cutting off those slow rollers. Showing a good arm. And a three run homer tonight. 
I could just hear Dick Enberg right now saying, So Larte, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> well, maybe not. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully it sounded. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dredosinovic is the batter. One out. And it bounces up there. By the way, Dick Enberg, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And afforded a wonderful honor, the Ford Frick Award winner. And made a wonderfully emotional speech at the Hall of Fame this year when he was inducted. And he was able to make the Hall of Fame despite working with Mark Grant. That's really <laughs> his talent. Hey. <laughs> his abilities were enhanced by Mark Grant. Yeah, well. Our pal on the right. Looks like they can't get a word in edgewise, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, who's that guy talking in there? Outside. It's not A.J. Preller, is it? Maybe it's somebody from the front office talking about their trade today. Will Venable was traded to the Texas Rangers before the game today for a minor leaguer and a player to be named. There's a hit for Joey. He's one for three. That's Clay Hensley, by the way, in the Padres booth tonight. And the Braves now with six hits. Try to chip away here in the late innings. Andrelton Simmons had that double play in the fourth that ended the great bases loaded chance. The reason Texas keeps acquiring players, they are right in the thick of things in the American League wildcard race. He started play tonight one game out of the second wildcard spot. Good for them. Everybody pretty much written them off when they lost you, Darvish. They're a half game behind the Angels. Who had a dreadful post All Star game slump working. And I don't know if Cole Hamels has pitched again. He had a, a groin problem after his first start. But wouldn't that be something if Texas and Houston make the playoffs out of the American League? It's quite possible. It is that that would be amazing. Don't know how many people might have picked both of them to make it. So Hamill's pitch last night we're told. Thanks Gretchen. There's a fastball strike. Two and two. Another guy with a left handed cap. Please tell me it's got a, a bend in it. And have the Chad Cordero thing working, does he? Definitely left handed. Ripped out of play and ricochets off the scoreboard. Texas lost tonight, by the way. The Mariners beat them three to two. Mariners eight games under 500. Another full count pitch for Anderton is on the way, and that's up the middle, a base hit. So back to back singles for Atlanta with one out. And Pedro Siriaco will get his first at bat. Remember, he came on in the flip flop lineup. He's batting ninth.
Cubs are coming back at home against Detroit. That's six five in the sixth inning. Well, that's a long night at Wrigley Field. They have a very long rain delay tonight. Houston beat Tampa Bay three to two. Astros began play tonight. Two and a half games in front of the Angels. Texas now four back after their five game win streak was snapped. And a strike. Washington did polish off the Rockies 15 to 6 at Coors Field. Jordan Zimmerman started that game. And if he wanted, he'll be 6 0 all time against Colorado. National starting pitching, pitching has been woeful lately. So that's a good sign for them. And they'll have Strasburg going to the mound against Jorge De La Rosa tomorrow. The Mets will be in Baltimore. Syndergaard against Ubaldo Jimenez. After the Rockies series, the Nationals have Milwaukee. 0 and 2 for Syriaco. Two on, one out. And a laser into the seats. Look out, folks. Pedro played here in 2013. 23 games hit 238 with a homer, double, and a triple. To third. Salarte to second. One and not in time. The Braves have him at the corners now, two out. And Michael Bourne gets another crack at the Padres pitching staff. He's 0 for 3, lined out back in the fifth inning. You know, back in the old days when the Braves were on TBS, times like this, Dad would usually ask the producer, Glenn, what's the movie tonight? So I'll change it up a little bit, little bit for you. Woody, what's coming up after the game tonight? Now, well, first it'll be Braves Live, and then it'll be Fox Sports Live. Two balls, two strikes. Game moving at a snail's pace. And a little roller back to the mound. And we are at the seventh inning stretch. All Padres in game two. There's some friendly faces. Johnny B. Dusty Baker.
MLB returns to Fox Sports 1. It's another doubleheader. The Giants look to improve their playoff chances. They battle the wild card leading Pirates, followed by the Rangers and the Tigers. Coverage starts at 3.30 Eastern right here on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. I like those matchups. Great to see teams that fans around the country don't ordinarily get to watch in Texas and Pittsburgh and certainly Detroit with their big man Miguel Cabrera back. That's always good for the game to showcase his talents. San Francisco and the Pirates played in a wild card game last year to see who was going to advance and we all know how the Giants did after that. Fired Madison Bumgarner in that game and they were off to the races. Read something today that the Pirates right now are on pace to win something along the line of 93 94 games imagine being a 94 win team and being a wild card club yeah that's the fate of the teams in the central because of what the Cardinals have done and that one got by Suriaco at third base and it's headed for the corner Derek Morris is going to have himself another extra base hit two doubles for Norris 27 of them for the year and the punishment being issued to the Braves bullpen continues in the seventh. Norris has been very impressive. BJ's had a big night. Excuse me, Melvin Jr. Homer, a single, three RBIs. And ball one. Swing and a drive deep left again. Upton has hit another one. Wow. Offensively for Melvin Upton Jr. in about three years. And it couldn't come at a better time for him against his old club. Popped up. Syriaco in foul ground will have room. Upton had eight RBIs all year. He has five RBIs tonight. Might be the kind of night that gets him going again. Tries to stir him up to get back into the level that he was several years ago. Seventh career multi homer game for Upton and his first since June 15th, 2013, while with the Braves against the Giants. His third career five RBI game. Wow. Nine nothing San Diego. So Wallace fouls one away. He walked and scored ahead of Salarte's 408 foot homer. Bombs away in San Diego tonight. Three home runs. Upton with two of them, Salarte with one of them.
Peterson at second. Two out. So it's looking more and more like tomorrow it's up to Julio Tehran to snap this what will be a nine game losing streak in San Diego. Julio though has pitched pretty good baseball over his last three starts. Maybe he's found something for Atlanta. Much of that work has happened at home. Julio has had plenty of issues on the road. We'll need him to be at his best for a happy flight to Chicago after game three here tomorrow. Andre scored single runs in the third and the fourth, five runs in the sixth, two more here in the seventh. Solarte with the big blow in the sixth inning, a three run homer. Fly ball to left. This one's going to stay in the ballpark. And that ends the inning. Yikes. Another long home run hit by Melvin Upton Jr. It's 9 0 Padres. Elite featherweight destroyer Max Holloway takes on dangerous double threat Charles Oliveira. Plus a welterweight showdown between Neil Magny and Eric Silva. Catch UFC Fight Night Sunday at 6.30 Eastern only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. It'll be a good one. Cameron Maven, the subject of tonight's Georgia lottery, hitting the jackpot. 400 average over his last 10. Seven multi hit games out of 10. Already has a hit tonight. Trying to extend that streak with an extra base hit during that multi hit streak. One ball, one strike.
to third. Salarte's got it. And got Maven for out number one. So barring a big rally by the Braves, that should be Maven's final at bat of the night. Here's Marcakis. Nick is 0 for 3. Fly ball toward left, up to near the stands and the line. He's got it. Two out. Edwin Jackson is getting ready for the eighth inning, it would appear. Yeah, but everything on uh, Matt Whistler is to the line drive that hit him in the arm, but he was able to finish the inning. And then they, the Braves took him out of the game, but I'm assuming he's okay. A two to nothing game when he came out. His next start is scheduled Sunday at Wrigley Field. Yeah, we don't have any matchups though for the Cubs that I know of. Not yet. I think John Lester pitches tomorrow, so I think that means they will miss him. So we get Hamill, we get. Hendricks, we get Arietta. But well, Arietta's tough. Maybe Rick Sutcliffe, who knows? We'll mm -hmm. see when we Milt Pappas. get to the <laughs> ballpark tomorrow. That would be a big story. Inside corner strike. I'd love to see big old Rick get out there again. That, crank it up. That hook delivery? Mm-hmm. Well, he pitched great for the Cubs when they got him that year, didn't he? On Cy Young. Mm -hmm. He lost only one game. He came over from Cleveland. Cubs are red hot. They've won 15 of 17 games. The last report, they were trailing the Tigers, and they are 6 5 in the seventh. AJ hits one hard to right. That's headed for the fence. A.J. Prasinski just continues to give this Braves team quality at bats. He has been a lot of fun to watch this year. A two hit night go along with a walk and a strikeout. Yeah and guys like A.J. professional hitters. It doesn't matter what the score is. They're not going up there to give away an at bat. Breaking ball used his hands. Clipped it into the corner. Nineteenth double for Prasinski. He's at second for Yuri Perez. He bats for McCarrahan. Andrew went at inning in a third. Two hits, two runs, no walks or strikeouts, and a home run. Rounded right side. Spangenberg has it, and that will send our game to the bottom of the eighth inning. All Padres, nine nothing.
to try to avoid a sweep tomorrow. And here are your Chevron probable starters. Julio Tehran will be looking for his ninth win against Tyson Ross, who has a losing record but a very good ERA. We've seen him against the Braves before be very good. For Julio Tehran against the Padres in his career, four career starts, a one and two record, and a 5.26 ERA. Pitched against them earlier this year at Turner Field, got a no decision, seven innings, only gave up four hits. Three earned runs, three walks, seven strikeouts. They need him to pitch like he's been pitching in his last two or three starts. So Edwin Jackson is on to pitch for the Braves. He was very impressive in his debut with Atlanta on August 15th. It was the game started by Mike Fultonevich against the Diamondbacks. Mike gave up six runs in his four and two thirds innings. Then Jackson came in through. Two and a third scoreless innings of relief with four strikeouts. He had that nasty slider working that when it's on, it's it's as good and as competitive a slider as anybody's. Yuri Perez stays in the game for Marquecas. He plays right. And Corey Spangenberg leads off for San Diego. It's bounced off his foot foul and out of play. Jackson and the Braves pitching for a little pride here. Every single man who has pitched for Atlanta tonight has given up at least two runs. Jackson's the fifth man to work. No swing. A ball and a strike. Full count. Matt Kemp put the Padres up one nothing in the third inning. He is on deck. Spangenberg, the 38th man to come to the plate. Nine of those 38 have faced a three ball count. Five walks. Braves only struck out two hitters tonight. They've surrendered three homers. And they just gave the ball girl an error on that play, by the Did way. They really? Yeah. That kind of night. Spangenberg walks to start the eighth. That slider, not one of his better ones. Nice night for Matt Kemp. And inside, a pair of Dodgers or former Dodgers facing off here. One ball, no strikes.
Kevin Quackenbush loosening up. Fly ball left. Bourne says he's got it, and Michael has it. One out. Big night for the Upton brothers. Sure has a chance for Justin to add to it. Broken bat roller left side. Siriaco to second for one. And a double play ends the inning. Hey, attaboy, Edwin Jackson. He works a scoreless inning. And the Braves come up for the night. Zaxby's and Georgia Power. San Diego will go for the shutout here in the ninth inning. We'll see if Kevin Quackenbush can fill the bill. He's on for his 39th game, two and two record, an ERA slightly above four. Just going to check. I know the um, Padres. Lead the league in shutouts, being shut out. I think it's 11. No, it's 16 that they have lost. They've won two shutouts. And the Braves have been shut out 11 times. They're the ones at 11. So let's see what Jace Peterson can do for the Braves in the ninth inning. Six, seven, and eight on the lineup card for the Braves. Jace is one for three tonight. His single loaded the bases in the fourth inning. That's when James Shields got mad. Struck out to Dosilovich on a changeup, then got Simmons to roll over and hit into a double play, and that was the last Atlanta offensive threat of the night for all intents and purposes. Melvin with a big night. Three hits, two homers, five RBIs. Biggest night for him in a long, long time.
Well, if the Padres are going to get above 500, I would assume he's going to get a ton of playing time. And you know what? He wasn't even in the lineup. Will Venable was in the lineup to play center field and got traded right before game time and required a lineup change. And Melvin was inserted. Really like watching Corey Spangenberg play second base. Good looking player. And that's the first out of the ninth inning. Fire starts to ring the bell, counts down the final three outs. He didn't uh, do anything to impress his manager earlier tonight. And Pat Murphy had a very distressful look on his face after Spangenberg hesitated around second base. Looked like he was trying to deke Michael Bourne and then got thrown out to end the inning. At third, when Michael gunned him down, that was in the fifth. He got on base four times tonight. He's made all the plays at second. He's had another good series against the Braves after torching Atlanta back at Turner Field earlier this year. Quickly, 0 and 2. For Joey Terdoslovich. Quackenbush looks like he could have been in the. Um, Soggy Bottom Boys band and Oh Brother Where Art Thou? Line foul out of play. Freddie Freeman will be back tomorrow. Quick turnaround. Game time 1240 Pacific time. And a full count. You know what the Padres are saying to Quackenbush got a 9 nothing lead. Two outs to get. Throw strikes. And he walked to Doslovich. Wow. Thank you very much. One point the Padres had two players on their roster whose surname started with Q Quackenbush and Quentin. Quentin was traded to the Braves, you might recall, and then designated for assignment. Off he went to Seattle and then promptly retired. Strike to Simmons. Last year was the first year for Quackenbush in the big leagues. Split time between El Paso and San Diego. 56 games with big league club. He saved six games. That's down the right field line and foul. He's out of Lando Lakes, Florida. Where's that? Well, there's some land and some lakes and He's, it's right in between. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I think we talked about that when the Padres were in Atlanta. I don't know exactly where it is, but they have great butter. Uh -huh. There's little pats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody in his family individually wraps those things. Who knows? 
Fly ball toward right. And in the corner, Kemp's got it. And foul ground. Throws it out of their last out. And it's up to Pedro Siriaco to keep it alive. And the fire rings the bell twice. Two outs in the ninth inning. You ever notice you never see the fire and Mark Grant in the same place? Mm hmm. It is an uncanny resemblance. <laughs> Pop fly foul out of play. Jadosovich will head back to first. You hey, look, I mean, it's. Both very happy chaps. Especially tonight, up nine. And foul away again. And it's nothing in two. Tehran and Ross tomorrow afternoon. And we're off to Chicago for four with the Cubs. He trails 7 6 in the eighth inning at Wrigley tonight. Back and forth game with the Tigers. 28,000 plus stand in the hopes of the final pitch of the game. And it was. Quackenbush struck out Syriaco. And the Braves are shut out for a 12th time. 9 0 is your final score in San Diego. James Shields wins it. Matt Whistler loses it. And the Padres bombard the Braves bullpen for seven runs in three innings of work. Nine nothing, San Diego, your final. Back with more in a moment. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Atlanta Braves and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the experience.